Agency work is sexy. Meet Josh Tapp, the entrepreneur and podcaster that made $50 million mainly through relationships. I launched a, a different show, um, just called The Pantheon. There's not even a public RSS feed. It's not on iTunes. It's not in those places. I literally text voice memos to a small list of people. But that list we've done about 750 grand, 800 grand from. Wow. I started like five, six months ago. He also shared with us the secret on how he transitions the conversations to sales. Some might say that it's called from homie to money. The thing is, you never need to sell. Okay, people will ask you for what you want if you present an exciting enough solution. If you're an entrepreneur, podcaster, or a service provider that is looking for ways to get more business through your content, this is a conversation for you. Like, if you want to become successful, get excited about what other people are doing. We've got some fresh new young hey, talent. I'm Luis. Doing and this is Luis. And welcome to Content is Profit Podcast. In here, you're going to get the insights, accountability, and drive to create consistently and increase revenue. You'll hear from top entrepreneurs, creators, and anything and everything you need to know about content. All this, we're having a good time. The goal of this podcast is simple. Entertain, educate, and turn your content into profit. Ooh, Let's go. Hey, hey, hey. Guys, today we have an incredible person. I actually met him at Capshovians Live in Orlando a few weeks ago, and his presentation was by far my favorite. Not because there's no slides, <laughs> which was great, but also the thing that he was talking about, how he was able to grow his business and help a ton of people with a very simple framework. And it's something that, you know, we've kind of touched here and there, but the way that he presented it was awesome. And then we were able to connect over different calls and uh, hopefully we'll be doing some stuff together moving forward. But, uh, you know, he's known as a podcast guy. He's the founder and chairman of Pantheon FM, as well as the host of the Lucky Titan podcast, which link right below if you want to go check it out. That show is Apple iTunes Top 50 Marketing and Entrepreneurship Podcast. He has worked with over 1,500 clients and generated over $25 million in revenue through his unique business strategies. Boy, boy, with his company, he aims to build a predictable and profitable audience building machine. How does that sound to you, Fonzie? Juicy. I'm ready to dive in. Juicy. Bring him on. Juicy. Bring him on. Bring him on. Guys, please welcome future Content is Profit Hall of Famer, Josh <laughs> Tapp. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go, Josh. <laughs> awesome. Dude, what an intro. I'm like... Cuts off to you guys. I'm not gonna lie, Josh. Here for a second, I thought either my brother forgot the button or your name. I was like, which one he forgot? Which one he forgot? <laughs> He's like, we had dinner. I don't even remember this dude's name. <laughs> 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 no, that would never ever happen, man. Why don't we, that, that was great dinner. That was a great dinner that we got to, you know, f find out that you also love Disney and we love Disney. <laughs> that was pretty much the whole conversation. <laughs> <we had. laughs> no, I'm joking, man. Josh, it's it's really an honor to have you here, man. I I'm kind of I'm kind of pissed. I'm kind of pissed and angry that we didn't meet earlier. That's it. You know? <laughs> I know. Some, someone's fired. That's all we got to know here, man. That's, I like that. That's I right. like that. Uh, so, Fancy, hit us with the first question and we'll go from there. Cool? Yeah, I'm going to sweep in and, you know, take over <laughs> this interview right now. Like my brother mentioned, it says you've generated, oh, I mean, you work with over 1,500 clients and generated over $25 million in revenue. The question yeah. is, how has content played a role in all that? Dude, 100%. That's actually outdated. We literally just in January crossed the $50 million mark. And I was like, wow, I wasn't going to say it till we crossed it. So it was, it was a, dude, yes. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I freaking love how you guys run this show, by the way. This is awesome. Um, <laughs> like, we're going to have to edit that out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so content has played a huge role in, in what we've done. You know, my, my podcast was the core driver of all of my companies. So we built and sold four agencies. Um, all of those were in the marketing sector and we basically built those along with the mastermind that I still currently run at Pantheon FM. Um, we built them all through relationship building, uh, through content. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think it's because we have a lot of listeners. And for a long time, I thought so too, until we actually tracked it. Um, we were generating at a 10 to one ratio, um, dollar per dollar for from our our guests than we were from our actual listeners and so when we, we realized that we actually changed the entire strategy around focusing on building solid relationships with, with with guests building partnerships with them and using that to generate um high ticket sales at the end of the day interesting before the conversation and i ask, I ask you what is your superpower 
right? And you said 100% (laughs) is seeing the deal in every relationship. Something that we realized early on when we started Content is Profit was the power of relationships, right? I think we were lucky enough that one of our, uh, you know, I think between our first 10 episodes, we had somebody come in and say, I want to work with you guys. And that lit up a light bulb said, hmm, Maybe we should be bringing on the show, obviously, the people that can provide value to the audience, but at the same time, the people that we want to work with, that we would love to work with and build that relationship with. And that changed the whole trajectory of the podcast. I feel like you are at the pantheon, right? If you know what I mean, (laughs) of of relationship building in a podcast, right? Like you said, you've done over 2,000 podcast episodes. You have one of the top, you know, marketing entrepreneurial podcasts out there. It's impressive. And I'm curious, how has that been possible? How has that evolved for you, right? I mean, you said you guys saw the data, 10 to 1, right? Dollars attributed. But when did you discover that power of relationship driving it through content? Is content just the vehicle or does content do something else besides, you know, putting you face to face with the person that you want to talk to? Yeah. And and that's actually, there's a few questions there I'm going to unpack a little bit because a a lot of people, and I'll put it this way. My, my story was doing everything wrong. So I knew what not to do like that's, and it still truthfully is kind of my, been my relationship with business is like, do everything as fast as you can, even if it's the wrong way to figure it out. Right. Mm. And I will say that barring the fact it cannot be immoral, unethical, unintegrable, you get the point, right? So it has to be, it has to fit within my, my standards, but like, you know, I'm going to try running ads to grow my show. I'm going to try hiring these different agencies. I'm going to try the person who hits me up on, on LinkedIn who says, Hey, I can get you a hundred thousand subscribers for $300. I'm going to try all those things. Right. Yeah. And, um, what was interesting is trying all those things actually helped us to grow the show really quickly. Um, and when we started, so the lucky Titan is actually an evolution. I've, I've had four different shows as well. And, um, all of them have been interviewing entrepreneurs, but when I first started and I was growing my shows, they were not doing very well until I realized, Hey, what if I just like bought my way there? Cause at, at this point when we launched the lucky Titan, I was like, I bet I, be, I, bet I could buy my way there. And so we started spending, I, mean, I think we spent like 80 to hundred grand to, to like get the show out mm. there. And it was, it wasn't hiring other people. It was like, we're going to run ads. We're going to focus on growing our email list. We're going to do all these different things. So I'm going to tell you there is a way to hack it by buying your way there. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But you will never, your audience will never compete with the likes of people like Mr. Beast or Joe Rogan or John Lee Dumas because they have organically built. And so their listeners are actual buyers. So I, I just want to caveat that. Like you can yeah. buy your way there to get fast if you want, if you want to show big numbers or whatever, but, um, but having that, that shift and helping like, and changing your mentality on it of going, okay, if we worry about that, or if we actually concern ourselves about the people on an individual level, the guests are actually more important than even the listenership. Yeah. And what's cool is if you'll actually focus the way you guys have done even here, right? As you make it a fun experience for me, it's going to translate to those who are listening to the show. Right. Yeah. And so what's funny is we've actually, I launched a, a different show. I'm um, just called the Pantheon and it's not even, there's not even a public RSS feed. It's not on iTunes. It's not in those places. I literally text voice memos to a small list of people but mm. that list we've done about 750 grand, 800 grand from, and wow. I started it like five, six months ago. Right. <laughs> wow. And it's so like what people don't realize is like, if you actually look at content as what it is, which is a gathering place, it, it actually changes the whole trajectory of what you do. Because like you said, Fonzie, right. is like taking the taking and putting content out there is like, becoming commonplace. Like people are putting content out there and they're trying to make it a little bit better or whatever. Yeah. Um, am I allowed to curse on your show? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I, I never curse. I'm Mormon. It's like against our religion to curse. So I apologize for those listening to this, but I, I had a guy say this to me once. He's like, if you want to organically grow and go viral, do you guys know who Sean Whalen is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. One of the most crass humans ever. He's a buddy of mine, but he <laughs> grabs me by the cheeks. He's like, do cool shit, Josh. <laughs> if you want people to see what you're doing, do cool shit. And I was like, what, like, why is that so profound? Mm. Right? Like, if you want people to consume your content, you have to do something cool. Yep. And if you're not making it cool, nobody's going to watch it. Yeah. Right? Like what you guys are doing, just even these little sound effects and stuff makes it cool. 
higher production value makes it cool enough that people are going to consume this, right? Yeah. So that's from like an organic side, but the guest side is it's just, this is literally the fastest way in the door with successful people. I've had multiple multi-billionaires on my show and from that we end up doing business with each other. So yeah. yeah. That's, Anyways. Josh, thank you, man, so much for laying it out there for, for us and congrats on uh, on all the success that you guys have mm -hmm. been having, right? Especially, I love the, the 750,000 from a private voice memo. And uh, you know, we, we talk about on our side, when we launched the show, we call it a show. We didn't call it a podcast. We actually did it on Facebook Live. And at the time, that was like 2020. So COVID was just starting out. And everybody was starting a podcast. Everybody was throwing a summit. Everybody was doing something like that. And just like that little change from, you know, podcast to show uh, was really interesting because a lot of people would come in. And uh, the first step was a Facebook Live that we would do together. That might come back. And then that was the thing that we would put on the podcast vehicle and then on the, on the later on the, on the YouTube channel, right? And that right. little thing was like a different experience for them because they were recording a live show and the energy was high, you know, all these things. And even though today we still have a lot of elements from that, that uh, helped us grab a ton of traction with our guests because it was a different experience, right? And make it, it made it more fun and it opened a lot of doors, right? So that's when that Fonzie's light bulb moment came up and it was super interesting. Now, I've been in, in a yeah. few conversations where, you know, we share our process and, and, you know, we might sell prior lower ticket than what you're selling or we are focusing on different types of relationships, right? The first like 100 plus guests were not the right market for the product that we were serving. So we had to switch and evolve and it has kind of evolved that way. Uh, now, you said that you built about four agencies, right? And then sold them as well. And now you have, obviously, your, your mastermind. Um, mm -hmm. We saw it on the agency side because it was a fast way to collect cash because we needed it. We had a 60-day runway that we were like, if we don't make money in 60 days, like, that's it. Like, this is game over. Uh, at the time, we quit our, our jobs to do business full-time, and we were, like, five months in. And we, ha I had an ultimatum from, you know, my wife and family and everybody's like, well, if this doesn't work, you know, you go back. And I'm like, that was like the worst nightmare for me. So we had to oh, make, yeah. make it work. And we're like, with a service, it helped us, right? We're at a moment today where we might be transitioning, right? It, that, that, has a, that has evolved. We have the brick and mortar podcast studio now and different things. But what is your advice for people starting agencies from there? Why, why was it an agency? Why wasn't a mastermind right away? It was a uh, strategic and then um, if you want to share a little bit of like how high of a ticket, right? Cause I was in a conversation with somebody and I was like, look, mm -hmm. our services start at $3,000 a month. And she got all discouraged because she was selling a book, yeah. uh, you know, a $7 item. And I'm like, well, with this specific strategy, you could potentially have conversations with people that will buy a thousand books, right? Like a library or a school system or different things. So it's, it's expanding our mind a little bit on who do we talk to regardless of the price point, right? So I would love to hear your thoughts on one, the agency side, people like going into there and, you know, is it the right move? And then on the on the price point of like, who are you relating to? Because a lot of people might not even see it as a possibility, right? Right. Well, and, and what I would tell you is like, agency work is sexy, right? Everybody's like, oh, you can build an agency. You can make a ton of money with it. I'm going to tell you agency work is really good to about a half a million dollars to a million dollars in sales. And then what happens is actually as you grow, your margin decreases because you have to increase your expenditures, right? So a lot of people who, because our, our best agency we were doing, I think we maxed out at almost, it was right around 7 million a year and it was in, in revenue. Mm -hmm. But what was interesting is at 7 million, I was making the same amount I was making at 4 million personally but we were making more revenue in the company. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot of you, especially the ops people listening to this are going, yeah, Josh, you could have fixed this, this, and this. And I'm like, okay, yes, yes, you can optimize. Yes, you can refine. <clears throat> but, but the reason agencies are super appealing is because it's really high margin dollars if you're willing to do the work or you can outsource it for really, really cheap, yeah. right? But at scale, that's extremely complex. So I, I always tell people, like when they come to me, they're like, Hey, what type of business should I start? I go, that depends. What, what's your exit strategy, right? Where do you want to make your money? Um, cause when I, when I caught on to this, I realized you can build agencies and sell them to bigger agencies for a ridiculous amount of money. And they'll even let you double dip for the pie, right? So like they'll, they'll buy your, your agency for usually three to 12 X, depending on, you know, what company you're selling, but they'll buy you for like three to 12 X your take home pay. 
Mm. Right. So if you can build this up to where, and that number is called EBITDA, if you're like one of the fancy people, I try to keep it simple. So <laughs> whatever, whatever money you are personally taking home from the business, they'll basically pay you three years, three to five years worth of, of that to buy the company. But a lot of times what they'll do is they'll also let you keep 10% of the company with zero work. So they keep growing it and you keep getting 10% of the profits for life, which is pretty much the deals that I've set up. Mm. So when I sell, when I sell these, I didn't do the first time. I really wish I had, but <laughs> um, cause that, that one would still be paying me out today. Um, <laughs> but point being is that they, you could build it that way. And if you think about, Oh, that's my exit strategy is to sell it. Right. That's one strategy. Another yeah. strategy is just to cash cow it. Right. So stepping out, hiring a CEO and letting them run it. I will tell you with agency work, and, and I, I want to be careful because I don't want to discourage people who run agencies because yeah. there's always an exception to the rule. But my general rule of thumb is there's always an exception to the rule, but you're probably not it. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, what I tell a lot of people is like, if you're starting an agency, build it to sell it. Mm-hmm. And just at the end of the day, because even if you decide to keep it, you've structured it profi- profitably enough that you're making enough money that it's fun to cash cow it, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. And so like if, if you identify that first, it helps you decide, do I build an agency? Do I build a coaching program? Because I'm going to tell you right now, selling a coaching program is really hard and it'll probably never happen. Mm. Yeah. Um, it, as of 2024, this is being recorded. 10 years from now, people might be buying those up like it's going out of style. I don't know. But right now, yeah. if you're a coach and you're like, I'm going to sell this. No, you're not. It's not going to happen. Mm. Um, but then there's like obviously physical goods, right? So you have like e-commerce or you know, a brick and mortar business selling physical products. And those should always be built to sell, always. Um, I think people are, we get too married to a product instead of getting married to the people, mm. right? Because if you actually look at, at an audience, if you even look at my audience, I have served the same group of clients across all of my companies. And what's cool about that is that when I sell another company, I retain the rights to my list. I always do that. P.S. Pro tip for you. Mm -hmm. So they can use your list, but you still get to use it yourself. And what I'll do is I will actually just sell my next service to my existing clientele. And that Mm -hmm. always allows us to like build the next thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're not starting from scratch every time. And that network, those relationships become truthfully like what keeps you growing. I, I mean... I think I told you guys about this. Like last year was like the hardest year for us. We got hit by a huge lawsuit. We got hit. Yeah. Uh, we got audited by the IRS. Freaking Stripe locked up wow. an, an exorbitant amount of money. So like we were like in this holy crap moment. We don't even have cash. I had to like start personally funding the company, which I hadn't done in a long time. And it was scary. Yeah. Um, but what in essence got us out of that was we said, hey, we've got this list of people. And I'm not talking an email list. I'm talking people I can pick up my phone and call. Right. Yeah. And I just told them what we were doing. So I said, hey, um, you know, company's in, a, in dire straits right now. So we launched a $50,000 offer that was like pretty much one-on-one and group coaching kind of hybrid, which isn't saleable. And I wasn't going to do this for life, but it was a bespoke offer, which means it's just easy to take. Yeah. Um, and I just picked up the phone in like three days or close 250 grand, which is enough to float the company, right? Wow. And like what people don't realize is that um, if you have that list of people, and you just keep asking them what they want. Yeah, it's really easy to construct an offer off of it. Does it make sense? Yeah, a hundred percent. Dude, um, I'm I'm one very impressed on how you can bring like very complex like structures or concepts and and make it very simple for people to maybe you know. Thank you. Simple enough for people to make a decision on right, and I think that's what uh, was super exciting when when I saw your presentation right at, at, at Capchovians live, and I was so interested because. I was like, man, we've been doing it, but we were we were also overcomplicating it in many ways. And now, as oh, as you're going through this, I'm like, huh, we can strip this out. We can do this. And you mentioned phone call, <laughs> right? And you mentioned I'm gonna reach out. And and you said like, um, a part in, in a different challenge that you guys did with with Capture, um, do the unscalable, right? Uh, and it was so exciting. And another liable moment for me was you share a story where you as an agency you lost, let's say, like you didn't achieve the targets and you get fired. And then there was another scenario where you did achieve the targets and you also got fired, right? In a sense of like, we did too good. And then they were like, you know, we have enough leads for like the whole year. We have to stop your services. And that to me was an eye-opening experience, right? And then right around that time, something like that happened to us. And I was like, ha, so interesting. And our wheels started to turn, right? And your presentation with Joe Pelusi, who's also coming to the show soon, was like, okay, what's the exit strategy? Because that's going to redefine everything that we do. And over the last two weeks, we've been 
been like trying to figure out like what that looks like. Right. We, I don't think we've ever sat down and, and figured that one out, but it was super encouraging. Right. And I feel, you know, um, everybody out there listening right now, if you're building it, this happens to me often where it's like, I'm so in it, right? Like I, I cannot like detach myself and I like, go up and, and look at the 30, 30,000, you know, view, 30,000 foot view. Wow. Yeah. English That's a tough is, one. Yeah. Monday, English, Monday from, you know, wow. He's getting there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you could have said kilometers and, this. you know, people wouldn't <laughs> understand too. Nobody will care. Nobody yeah, care. absolutely. So, you know, I think you're bringing a lot of uh, really cool concepts for people that are building businesses and are starting to publish yeah. because publishing can also be a very big distraction, right? It's like, oh, I didn't record yeah. this time or I should record this on YC because the audience is not liking it. Doesn't matter. Like, what are the relationships that we're building that we can literally pick up the phone and do that? And I feel like very um, honored that I could do that with you, for example, right? And we've had a couple yeah. of those conversations and that will allow you to go further and faster. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, a, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna need that Mormon t- training program, man, because... <laughs> Every Mormon person I meet, first, they're amazing, man. And, like, they have such a, you guys have such a good, like, core of values. Um, But it's not only that. I know, you know, you guys go out on missions and you guys are putting yourself out there, knocking on doors, talking to people. And I think you guys are really learning some valuable skills, right, that translate directly into the professional world, right? right? So, on that note, right, I'm very curious because right now the conversation has been very directed to obviously services, right? Developing right. relationships. I have a few questions on what you mentioned about about Sean Whalen, but I'm going to leave those for a little bit later. I'm curious on once you establish a relationship, right? How do you go about nurturing those relationships? And I want you to think about it from the point of view of somebody that they might not think of themselves as somebody with the reputation, right, or the authority to build relationships with some of the people that they might see on YouTube, right, or they might listen to on a podcast, but they want to bring them on as a guest, but then, you know, it they might be a little bit scared, I guess, to build that relationship, to pursue that relationship. How do you go about nurturing those specifically people that, you know, might be higher up in the scale of influence, if you want to put it that way. Yeah. And, and, you know, actually this, this is a twofold question. So I'm going to, I'll, I'll explain it in two ways. The first one is that if you want to work with wealthy or successful people, right? So I'm talking, you know, A-list actors, actresses, athletes, obviously entrepreneurs, right? Like any category, they're way more accessible than you think. Number (laughs) one. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to put that out there. It's number one, it's, it's a mindset shift to go, okay, they're, they're human beings yep. and they're extremely accessible. Okay. But there are only two things that you can offer to somebody who's wealthy when you're dead broke, you can literally be homeless and offer these two things to, to a successful person that that's attractive to them. Okay. The first one is relationships, 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 relationships. So you can connect them to somebody else who could either provide a service for them, that could be a potential partner for them, that could be a client for them, whatever it is. And the second thing is save them time. Mm. Okay, so you can save them time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Those are the only two things that broke people have and abundance of, right? And they don't even realize they have it half the time, okay? Mm. Because when you're broke, you're like, doing all these chaotic things, you're busy all the time, and you're going, man, like, I have no time. It's like, wrong-o, your time is so (laughs) freaking cheap, give it away. And I'm not saying sell your services for free. I'm saying yeah. Yeah. give your time to somebody successful. Okay. So I'm going to give you two examples of this or, or I'll give you two different. I'll give you one example for this and one for the next one. Um, we had a guy. Okay. Um, he's a client of ours. He's big player at the time. And he's like, he basically helps companies to exit. Right. So he takes them. He's a consultant. He basically helps them grow from like 30 million to hundred million plus. Right. Mm. Which I'll show you how I connected with that guy here in a second. But, okay. but that's, this guy was a client, right? He was paying us for podcast production services at the time. So he, he reaches out to me and he's like, Hey dude, I've got this guy. Um, he's, he's having a hard time setting up his camera setup, you know, and between you guys and me, like we were doing millions of dollars, like that should have been beneath me. Yes. <laughs> Do you agree with this? Yeah. I mean, top, top, level, to top level. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Like fr- from the outside perspective, they're like, why would you do that? Yeah. yeah. Right. You, you shouldn't be putting time towards that. I 100% disagree. I was like, Jim has this guy's name. I was like, Jim, love you. Love to work with you. I, yeah, I'll happily help this guy set up his camera. Right. Hop on FaceTime with this guy. 
It's Bill Letterer. Do you guys know who this is? <laughs> no. no. Okay. I did case studies on this guy during my master's degree program. Okay. Multi billionaires and multiple multi six multi um, multi million dollar exits, right? Six different companies he sold for billions of dollars. Wow. And he can't figure out how to set up his freaking camera. Okay. <laughs> wow. But craziest thing about this, help him set up his camera and we just get talking while he's doing it. And I'm going, are you like, you're like Bill Letter, like Shutterstock Bill Letter? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh my <laughs> gosh. So I started fangirling over this guy. And, but we're setting it up and he's just talking to me and I'm like, well, what's got you excited right now? Right. And he's like, oh, Josh, my next project, right. He's starting a university in India to help train up people to become virtual assistants. Mm. And this is a guy who's done billions of dollars, right. Mm. But this is more of like a philanthropic project for him. We ended up helping him on that project, did a ton of work for him on that project and made a ton of money off it, which is awesome. I didn't have to sell him anything. I just got excited about it. And he's like, because I'm helping him set up his camera. He's like, what do you do? And I'm like, <laughs> Well, let me tell you, you know, I'm in podcasting. Blah, 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 right? yeah, and yeah. what people don't realize is like, if you just get excited about what they're doing, people are going to naturally ask you what you do. Yeah. And you don't have to pitch. You just be excited about what you're doing too. You're like, dude, I watch podcasts. Yeah. What about this person is really cool. This person is really cool. And they get all excited about it. Right. Yeah. So that guy, what he hired me for bill, what he hired me for was a time saving activity. Okay. Mm. Um, I won't go into like the details of it, but basically we came in and saved him an immense amount of time by making two or three connections. Yeah. Okay. The next thing is the relationship side. If we're trying to provide relationships to people, it's really super simple. Um, all you have to realize is that wealthy people know wealthy people, poor people know poor people. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of Makes the sense. way of humanity. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When I launched the lucky Titan, I was like, cause I had been interviewing like local businesses and other Mormons, funny enough. Um, so I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna like interview other people and people that were in my, my immediate circles. But then I had somebody challenge me. They're like, why don't you interview like more successful people? I'm like, okay, who's the wealthiest person I know. And so I went on my LinkedIn and I had probably 2000 connections at the time, scrolled through until I found a super successful one, which I was like, I think he's successful. So I would, in my mind, I was like, he's making a couple million bucks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I bring him on. His name's Josh Steinley, actually still one of my favorite humans to this day because we share the same name too. That helps. <laughs> but, but Josh goes, um, he comes on my show and he goes, Josh, that was the best show I've ever done. And this guy's been on tons of shows. And I know he was just being nice to me. I like, there's no way it was the best show I'd ever done. I was using a blue Yeti mic, had a freaking my laptop camera. It was not good. Okay? Yeah. So low production volume or whatever. But like I asked him genuine questions and I was so freaking curious about what he was doing. And then he asked me, he's like, what can I do for you, man? At the end of it, I was like, you know, I just really want to interview more people like you. He goes, oh, do you have like a cap on like income to come on? And I was like, well, absolutely not. I'm not <laughs> like a, I'm not, I have a lower. It turns out this guy has a mastermind for billionaires. You have to have a billion dollar net worth to be in the room. Wow. He got me 45 guests to come on my show over the next like 30 to 60 days who are making a billion dollars a year. Right? <laughs> These are huge players. And I went, I think I just cracked the code because yeah. all yeah. I did is with each of them, I just, I said, Hey, like, uh, I'd get excited about what they're doing. See if I could help them out to whatever, to the best of my ability, but I would never directly pitch them. Mm -hmm. Right. They'd come on my show and I would just be excited. What's, what's like, this is just the dream line. Just so you guys know, I share this with everybody. Ask people what they're most excited about right now. What's yeah. your next big project that you're stoked about because they need help with it. Hmm they're going to have gaps. They're trying to figure out that that's something that's a problem. They're actively trying to solve right now. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely. But I think that, I mean, this is just one, the biggest golden boulder of the show right now. <laughs> this is that question. If you might, if you're golden asking boulder. yourself, what is a golden boulder is like a golden nugget, just way bigger, way, bigger. way more powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was asking myself that, but I kind of made the contextual quiz. Like, okay, pretty, yeah, pretty witty, Louis. We, we, we've uh, got to be a Spanish phrase. Yeah, we've been debating on sending helmets to our <laughs> guests. You know, it's like kind of like a package. You know, it's like, dude, thanks for the golden boulders. Take care of yourself out there. Yeah, <laughs> protect your head. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. That, that was um, amazing, man. I, I love. Um, the excitement part actually this morning funnily enough i was driving to the studio and i had a tour you know i was having a conversation on somebody that's interesting on the services and you know i was going on my head over all right how can i sell him on stuff like this and in my mind i got to the conclusion that it's like everything is an energy exchange and then i related oh, that to content like content is an energy exchange the people that i see on content in front of the camera that are you know, I can tell that they have some sort of blockage or, you know, friction or they don't really want to be in there. 
I don't consume their content. I'm not attracted to it. I, I'll, I'll scroll by it. Right. But the people that have good energy, right, that you can feel it through the screen, I'm attracted to that. And it's the same with the people that are selling me products, right? Those right. are the people that I will potentially trust the most or at least lean in at first and pay attention to them. So I was like, all right, right. you know, I just got to... I just gotta put the good energy. It's all about that energy exchange. So I love the fact that you talked about it. Get excited about what they do, obviously in a genuine way. And when they ask about you, you gotta be excited about your own stuff as yeah. well, right? It's, it's interesting. My mind yeah. immediately goes to, oh, sir, you wanted to say something? No, no, no I was, I'll, I'll throw a point in, but if you're, yeah. you're on a roll, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, just, I was just gonna ask you kind of like a follow up question in there. And this comes from a very personal, you know, feeling. I've had a very challenging time to transition the conversation from you are my friend, you're my homie right now, to money. To a sale. Right? Okay, dude, I love this question because I've, I've cracked the code on this. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I, I am actually an introvert, contrary to uh, popular opinion, right? Like, you guys probably even see this, right? We went to dinner together. I know pretty much everybody there, but I'm, I'm going to go sit in the corner. That's just what I do. I'm not the guy who's going to run up and like talk to you, like get all up in your face. It's not who I am. I am very energetic on camera for some reason. God, no, maybe hyperactive is the better term there. I don't know. But, but like being an introvert, that's the hardest part, right? Mm -hmm. Is you're like, man, how the freak do I transfer transition to the sale without making them feel uncomfortable? Okay. The, the thing is you never need to sell. Okay. People will ask you for what you want. If you present a, an exciting enough solution, that's really what it is. So there, there is a transition statement that I love. Okay. And I'm actually going to recommend a book here. I'm not paid to do this. I really need to get an affiliate link for it. It's called lift your impact. It's backwards on the screen hmm. um, by Richard Newman. Okay. This guy came on my show about eight months ago and he like explained this 10 times better than I did. So I've just totally stolen his method and he knows it. So, um, <laughs> But when, you, when you're having a conversation with somebody, let's say you're talking with somebody who's super successful, right? Yeah. And you're going, there's no way in heck I could serve this person, right? Quit trying to shove your solution down people's throat. Mm. Present it as a solution to a problem, okay? So what you do is, number one, talk to them, ask them what they're excited about, okay? They might be like, oh, you know, I'm excited about... We're, we're launching this school, you know, over, like it's a philanthropic project. Oh, I'm doing, um, I'm launching a podcast. I'm writing a book. I'm... Um, I don't know, because I'm talking business to business. Most people, yeah, I think, yeah. listening to your show are probably B2B, yeah? Yep. Um, if you're talking to entrepreneurs, like, we've always got the next thing we're excited about. I mean, I know you guys, hey, we're, we're launching our studios, right? So yeah. I can hear this in your voice. If I want to transition the conversation, and this is the most amazing, the, the most amazing thing, because you're already probably good at this, show them a bigger picture, always, Okay. So I, I never leave a conversation without feeling like I have helped them elevate their vision, get bigger thinking. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can do this even with people who are billionaires. I'll, I'll give the example of a book because it's super relatable probably to your audience. So you're writing a book, right? You're probably scared. It's, it's not going to sell. Truthfully. I, I've worked with people who are billionaires who are concerned. It's not going to sell. And funny enough, half the time it doesn't, but <laughs> you know, like their book isn't going to sell. So I'm like, Oh, you know, like, well, what if you could just sell like 5,000 copies to one group? And they're like, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> right. I just propose an idea. I don't do that. That's not what I do for a living, but I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I have a buddy who does that. Um, why don't I connect you to him? And they're going to go, Oh wow. Like he's actually genuinely trying to help me solve this problem. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So if you aren't a fit, don't try to force your way into a sales conversation, connect them to somebody else. Yeah. Okay. That's the first part of this, right? So be the one who knows the best solution and help them think bigger on the thing they're excited about. Right. Cause they're already stewing on it. Oh man, we're launching these new studios in person. I'm like, Oh, awesome. What if we had one of those in every state, like a year from now? Right. Mm -hmm. Like, well, how would you do that? But, oh, well, you really only need volume, right? You just need more podcasters. We have a whole list of podcasters, right? Yeah, yeah. You get the point? Yeah. yeah. Right? I'm just using you guys as the example here because your audience probably knows what you're doing. But point being is is you're addressing what they're excited about. You're showing them a bigger picture. Like, oh, wow, what about this? They're immediately going to think you're the coolest and smartest person in the room. <laughs> it's crazy because you're just excited about their next step. Okay? Yeah, yeah. But this is where the transition comes in, okay? If they are not a fit you connect them with a service provider who is, okay? What a lot of people don't know about me is I generate more than half of my income every year off of referral commissions to other people, Wow. okay? Because I'm constantly looking for, because 
what you'll see is as you do this, the deals get bigger and bigger and bigger. Cause you might be like, Oh, well, this marketing agency is pretty good at what they do. But then like the school with Bill Letter, we were talking about, right. I actually, weirdly enough, know one of the most connected entrepreneurial people over in India. Like he's hmm. like one of the biggest entrepreneur coaches over there. And I was like, well, why don't I just get you two in touch? What was cool is I put them in touch. It was a multi, multi-million dollar deal. And they both kicked me a hundred thousand dollar check as a thank you. Okay. Wow. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I, I just made the introduction. I didn't have to facilitate anything, right? So there's a lot of money in just doing that. Okay. Yeah, interesting. But then the transition, and I know this is kind of a long winded answer, so I apologize. But, yeah, nice. um, but what I'll tell you is that the transition then is if you are a good fit, here's the statement. Okay. Did you know that's what I do for a living? Mm. They, they tell you their problem and they're not even their problem. They tell you what they're excited about. You go, Oh, this is awesome. They're like, yeah. yeah. And they're like, Oh, and okay. I know this might be coming out of the blue, but I actually do that for a living. And they go, Oh, okay. Tell me about what you do. That's the transition statement. It's yeah. not uncomfortable. They'll go, Oh, and you can feel the energy. If it feels icky or whatever, just take note of that and go, okay, I didn't build their vision enough. Yeah. That's literally all there is to it, but you'll get good enough at this that after doing it about 10, 15 times, every single conversation you have, they're going to go, okay, that's interesting. That's so super cool. interesting. Yeah. Right. Dude, yeah, so cool. it's, it's okay to just state your intentions and tell people like, this is what I do. Yeah, right? dude, Fonzie, great question from homie to money. Josh, even, <laughs> <laughs> even better answer. <laughs> um, that. Yes, that, that's the headline. Yeah, of the, we're going to have to bring you for part two for sure. <laughs> Dude, uh, yes, incredibly uh, grateful, man. Like my my iPad is like fuming with notes here and obviously we're going to leave the, the summary and everything right below. Is there anything that you want to add before we head out? I think the, the biggest thing right now is that I'm, I'm trying to get across the world is like, just be somebody who actually like builds other people up and builds their vision, right? Like if you want to become successful, get excited about what other people are doing. Quit yeah. trying to hawk your stuff on people. Have you ever seen, a, I think it's Aladdin, but it might be Hercules where he like opens up his coats on, you're a Disney fan, yes? And he's yeah. like, want to buy a sundial, right? Like, <laughs> yes. I, can't tell you how often I get like when I get pitched by people, that's how I feel 90% of the time. It's because yeah. they mm. didn't take enough time to get to know me and to actually care about what I was doing. Yeah. And if you'll actually be that person to get excited about what other people are doing, it just creates an ecosystem of excitement and you're both going to become more successful. It's coming back to like my spiritual roots is like, it's actually a spiritual, um, principle that like when you give more, you receive more. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so people are always wondering, well, what do I give? It's like seed excitement, seed hope, seed faith, whatever it is that you promote. If you'll seed that out there, I mean, you'll, you'll get phone calls all the time. I, I had one guy came on my show five years before there was no way I could have helped him. Could have helped him at all. Calls me up last year and is like, dude, just did a $2 billion exit. I need help. And I was wow. like, sweet, paid me 50 grand to spend one day with him at his house. Okay. And his beautiful house in Dana Point, California. Yeah. I did nothing to attract that guy. He just was like, I know you're the guy for this. He's like, you're the one guy I know who like builds vision, like builds people's vision. I'm like, that is interesting. Wow. And when you realize that's a skill set, it's, it's a trainable skill set and it's something you can do even if you're homeless, truthfully. So, yeah. so good, Josh. Yeah. Uh, no, we have one last minute. How can people connect with you? Where, uh, where can they, uh, you know, find you and your community? Yeah. So pantheon.fm is our website. I ask that people head over there. So Pantheon, and I'm not going to go too far down this rabbit hole, but this is really what we're doing over there is we're actually gathering people from all over the world, entrepreneurs in primary, uh, in, in principle, is that the word? <laughs> Anyways, we're gathering entrepreneurs and our goal with that is to basically bring you guys together to do more business with each other. Um, it's a very cheap, low cost community, but you can also access everything that we have over there. We're doing something kind of cool. So this is my, my, my shout out to, to those of you who are um, connectors is we are, um, we've built this with a buy one, give one program. So when somebody buys a seat, we actually give one away um, oh, and nice. you can choose who that person is or we work with youth groups we, who are, want to be entrepreneurial. We work in Africa, India, Brazil, a bunch of these countries where they have people who maybe can't afford a service like ours or coaching like ours. And then we're literally bringing in some of the That's highest awesome. paid speakers in business to come in and train, um, train people. So I'm like super excited about it. Um, 
Yeah, so Pantheon.fm. Pantheon is P-A-N-T-H-E-O-N.fm. Yeah. It's not .com. Yeah. And Link right below. All you got to do is scroll down with your big thumb or small thumb, yeah. whatever thumb you have, and uh, <laughs> just click in there. Guys, uh, we're Never. super excited. We talked a lot about this last uh, phone call that we had, and hopefully also we'll be you know we'll be a part of it and, and sharing our, the content frameworks and different things. But, Josh, it has been an absolute pleasure today, brother. Uh, Same what, here, what, Thank what, you. What a cool conversation. Fancy, anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. You are absolutely amazing, man, and can't wait for part two. Sweet. <laughs> With that said, guys. We'll see you later, guys. Thanks. Yeah. See you, Josh. See you guys later. Welcome all. Thanks for listening to Contents Profit. <laughs> if you enjoyed the show, go ahead and follow in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at Beast Brisco. That is right. In today's episode, <laughs> to help you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share this episode. And of course, leave a five-star review and call out my brother for uh, all the his silliness. Bye, guys. <laughs>